Okay, firstly, I am in no way affiliated to Simjack, and the views here are based on my own opinions from uh, my own usage over the past few months. Um, so I've been using these pedals now for almost four months, and let's just say straight away, I think overall, they are an amazing pedal set and worth significantly more than the price they actually cost. My consistency and performance since using these has greatly improved and my driver ratings have never been higher. That said, they are not perfect and possibly not right for everyone, but what they do offer is incredible price, the performance ratio and options to fine tune to exactly how you like your pedal setup to be. When I first got these pedals, there wasn't a lot of information available. So I made a few videos and also started a SimJack user Facebook group and Discord. There'll be some links below. And in just a few weeks, we already have over 700 members. There are a mix of users or potential users that are looking for more information before deciding on which pedals to buy. Uh, and based on my own experience and others in the group, I think we've seen uh, most of the potential issues and had many discussions on setup and potential modifications. So what I will try and do is give you my opinion so far based on my usage and also some feedback from other users in the group. So if we look about cons or negative things, I, I don't really think there are any major issues in, in my opinion. Based on all the members that we have um, and the feedback we've been given, I think we've only seen one set of pedals that have arrived and, and haven't functioned correctly. And in this case, in many cases as well, if, if issues are found, the team over at SimJack respond quickly to any, to any contact. There have been some reports of slight movement on the brass bushings, which allow the pedal arm to move side to side. I check mine and I also have this on my uh, accelerator pedal. But it's also been said that having the hydraulic dampers seems to help. And if this problem really bothers you, there are better bushings available from third parties. Um, and while we're on the subject of these hydraulic dampers, it's also been confirmed that these are unidirectional. So they help when compressing the pedal, but don't add any lag to the pedal return, make, making them function the same way as, as very high end pedals. So for me, I have this slight side by side side-to-side uh, -side movement on my accelerator pedal but to be quite honest i didn't even know i had it till i went to go and look for it and it doesn't impact my driving whatsoever so it doesn't cause me any problems at all for the brake um here is where we get into a discussion on preference of feel rather than i would say a, a pro or a con of the pedal itself there are mixed opinions on two main aspects of the brake pedal one is the distance that the pedal travels, and two is the force required to press the pedal. So for me, the pedal travel distance was the hardest thing to get used to, but it is also the part that's given me the most improvement in my driving. So I came from CSL load cell pedals, and these had very little pedal travel, and were also very hard to press down. The short travel of the pedal meant that it was very difficult to accurately modulate brake pressure as the distance between, say, 50% brake and 100% brake was only a few millimetres of travel or a few kilograms of force applied. This meant that driving cars with no ABS was difficult as I would constantly lock the wheels. Likewise, cars that did use ABS, I could not easily find the ABS threshold so as not to engage ABS each time I braked. The SimJack pedals have made it much easier to brake better and more consistently, and my overall braking is now much better, and the pedal movement has allowed a much better platform for trail braking, but I still need to improve here. For the force required, I have tried several tests with different elastomers, and I've always ended up back at the stock setup. Now, there are a few variables that might determine if you like the stock setup or would prefer something a little different. Overall, very few people think the brake pedal is too hard to press. The general overall opinion is that the stock 70 Shore elastomers are a little on the soft side. Based on other factors, I can see why people would think this. 
Now, I don't use a heel plate on my rig, so my leverage point is lower on the pedal, making it harder to press down. Uh, I did try my Fanatec heel plate on the pedals, but when I did this, uh, I found I could just press the brake much easier, which I didn't like, so I went back to not using it, and I found the force there was much better for me. So if you do have a heel plate, then probably you'll be able to press the brake easier, and it might feel like they are too soft. The good news here is that there are many mods available that include different elastomers or preload springs that make it possible to fine-tune to exactly what you like, and well, I'll add some links below. So for me, I am very happy for now with the stock setup, but like most things, there is potential to make improvements. For the preload spring, maybe something a little shorter and stiffer to improve the first small pedal engagement, and there are many examples of this in the, in the user group. And again, in, with the elastomers, I am happy so far, but I suspect that the life cycle of the stock ones could be quite short. So in time, I'll look to replace these with perhaps a different material, such as the new ones now available from 3D Wrap, or modding the hoisting belt upgrade kit to fit, which has also been done, or just using a better material elastomer, such as the ones from Fibroflex. This is another benefit of this type of pedal, as there is great adjustability and the potential to make it exactly how you want it. On to calibration. Um, so based on the simulator that you use will depend on how you need to calibrate the pedals. I am almost 100% iRacing, and in there I can calibrate the pedals from just the raw values, so I don't need to calibrate in Windows or any other software. If your game or sim needs the pedals to be calibrated in Windows, there are several ways to do this. You can use the Windows calibration tool, DI View, or even better it seems is FreeJoy, where it's possible to now create custom curves for your pedals exactly as you need them. Uh, and as far as compatibility is concerned, I've tried the pedals so far in iRacing, uh, Assetto Corsa, ACC, Race Room, R Factor 2, uh, and even the latest Ren Sport, and I've had no issues with registering or calibrating the pedals in any of the sims. So performance-wise, how, how have I found these? Well, it's hard to actually judge what difference the pedals have made to my driving other than I feel I am now driving much more uh, consistently and better in any car that I actually choose to drive. Uh, along with the obvious braking performance improvements that uh, the fact that cars I would struggle in before are now much easier to drive and I can be much more consistent. So the only real metric I can use to see the performance upgrade these pedals have given me is what's happened to my I rating over the period of time that I've been using them. So over this period of time, the only change was the pedals. Uh, I was not racing any more than usual. Uh, I was just focusing on the series uh, and the season that I knew I would be using. And from the beginning of June, I started at around uh, 2.6K I rating. I lost some points initially while getting used to the pedals, but once I started to get used to them, I became much more consistent and indeed faster, so my points started to rise. Uh, my best ever I rating previously was around 3k, but I could never maintain this for very long. So with the new pedals, I've gone past this previous best, and currently I am just under 3.9k, so an improvement of 1,300 I rating in a single 12-week season since I started using them. Along with the fact that driving is even more enjoyable when you can actually see positive progress. So, if you're in the market for a good set of pedals that give you all the benefits of real top-end equipment but at a significantly lower price, I don't think you'll be disappointed with these pedals. They might not suit you straight from the box, but there are many options to make them exactly as you would like. And I, but I strongly recommend trying them first in stock form before buying any modifications. If you're using any of the Logitech, Thrustmaster, Fanatec CSL, V2, V3 pedals, these will almost certainly be an improvement um, over the ones that you are using. And there are even reports of people swapping out hoisting belt spring pedals along with other more recognized premium bands, brands for SimJack Pros as well.
So thanks for watching. If you need any more information, please post a comment. Feel free to check out the Facebook group and Discord. And I'll be back in a few months with another update. Thank you.